Welcome to the journey of a lifetime, where every word counts, every verse speaks, and every story unfolds to reveal the timeless wisdom of the ages. I'm your host, Lynn Falconer, and I welcome you to this episode on the Joyful Alchemist podcast. I want to thank you for subscribing, and I ask you to please do share with friends and family. In our reading today, we are looking at the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 1 through 27. This is part 1 of today's episode. In this chapter 6, we encounter a passage that holds profound insight into the journey of personal growth and deepening one's faith and trust in God. This section, often referred to as the Nazarite vow, outlines specific instructions given by God to Moses for those who wish to dedicate themselves to a period of consecration and devotion. Beyond its historical context, these verses offer timeless wisdom that can guide individuals and communities in their spiritual development. The passage begins by outlining the Nazarite vow, a voluntary act of devotion to God, wherein an individual commits to abstain from certain practices for a specified period. This includes refraining from wine and other fermented drinks, avoiding all grape products and abstaining from cutting one's hair. Moreover, the vow requires the individual to avoid contact with the dead, even within their own family. The duration of the vow can vary, but it typically lasts for a set period of time, during which the individual dedicates themselves wholly to God's service. Now, at the end of this period, the Nazarite is to bring offerings to the Lord, symbolizing the completion of their vow and their renewed commitment to God. So, if we look at applying the lessons, we start out with commitment to holiness. The Nazarite vow illustrates the importance of setting oneself apart for God's purposes. In our personal growth journey, it is essential to cultivate a sense of holiness and separation from worldly distractions. This may involve making sacrifices and commitments to prioritize our spiritual development above all else. We can also look at it from a self-discipline and sacrifice perspective. Abstaining from certain indulgences such as wine and grooming practices require self-discipline and sacrifice. Similarly, in our lives, there may be habits or behaviors that hinder our spiritual growth. By exercising self-discipline and sacrificing worldly desires, we can deepen our connection with God and align ourselves more closely with His will. And then if we're looking at it from an avoidance of negative influences, That prohibition against contact with the dead symbolizes the importance of avoiding spiritual contamination. In our journey of faith, it is crucial to discern and distance ourselves from influences that may lead us away from God. This could include toxic relationships, harmful environments, or destructive behaviors and habits that undermine our spiritual well-being. And then we can look at the full circle of renewal and commitment. Just as the Nazarite brings offerings to the Lord at the end of their vow, we too must continually renew our commitment to God. Personal growth is an ongoing process, and it requires regular reflection, repentance and recommitment to God's purposes. Through prayer, worship, and acts of service, we can reaffirm our dedication to living according to God's principles. So, in summary, 
when we look at the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 1 through 27, it offers valuable insights into the journey of personal and collective growth in faith and trust in God. By embracing the principles of commitment, self-discipline, discernment, and renewal outlined in these passages, individuals and communities can deepen their relationship with God and experience transformational growth. Now, as we embark on our spiritual journey, may we heed the wisdom of the book of Numbers, chapter 6, and strive to live lives of dedication, wholeness, and faithful obedience to God's will. We're now going to continue into part two of today's episode. And in part two, we're going to do just a brief summary of each of the chapters from chapter seven through 10 of the book of Numbers. These chapters in the book of Numbers present a tapestry of narratives, laws, and rituals that again offer profound insights into personal collective growth. These chapters primarily focus on the dedication of the tabernacle and the organization of the Israelite camp. Let's delve into the content and extract some timeless lessons applicable to our journey of personal and collective development. Starting with chapter 7, this chapter records the offerings brought by the leaders of the twelve tribes of Israel for the dedication of the tabernacle. Each leader presents identical offerings demonstrating unity and equality among the tribes in their commitment to God. The detailed account emphasizes the importance of generosity, unity, and devotion in spiritual endeavors. It also underscores the significance of everyone contributing according to their ability, fostering a sense of community and shared purpose. Now the application of that for us in our individual lives is where we can learn from the spirit of generosity exhibited by the tribal leaders. It reminds us that our growth journey is not solely about personal achievements, but also about uplifting others, sharing our blessings, our talents and resources with others. That enriches our lives and also fosters a sense of interconnectedness. Now, if we look at it from an application of collective growth, organizations and communities thrive when each member contributes wholeheartedly. Chapter 7 encourages collective endeavors where everyone plays a part, fostering a culture of collaboration, trust, and unity essential for achieving common goals. Let's now move on to chapter 8. Chapter 8 describes the lighting of the lamps in the tabernacle and the consecration of the Levites for their service to the Lord. The symbolism of light signifies divine presence and guidance. The Levites chosen to assist the priests undergoes purification rituals before assuming their sacred duties. Their consecration signifies a separation from ordinary tasks to devote themselves entirely to spiritual service. Now if we look at that as an application for personal growth or collective growth, just as the lamps illuminate the tabernacle, individuals are encouraged to seek enlightenment and spiritual growth. Personal purification and dedication are necessary steps in pursuing a deeper connection with the divine and fulfilling our purposes in life. In communities and organizations, it's vital to identify and honor individuals' unique talents and roles. Chapter 8 emphasizes the importance of recognizing and supporting those who dedicate themselves to serving others. 
By empowering individuals to fulfill their calling, collective growth and prosperity are enhanced. And then we get to Chapter 9, the Passover celebration. Chapter 9 details the observance of the Passover, a commemoration of the Israelites' deliverance from slavery in Egypt. Even amid their wilderness journey, they are instructed to celebrate this festival as a reminder of God's faithfulness and redemption. The chapter also addresses the provision for those unable to participate due to ceremonial impurity or being away on a journey, illustrating God's inclusivity and grace. Now, from a personal growth and a collective growth perspective, the Passover serves as a reminder of the importance of remembering our past struggles and victories. Reflecting on our journey and acknowledging divine intervention cultivates gratitude and resilience, empowering us to face future challenges with faith and courage. Celebrating shared experiences and milestones strengthens the bonds within a community. Chapter 9 highlights the significance of inclusivity and compassion, ensuring that no one is left behind. By fostering a culture of support and understanding, communities can navigate obstacles together and emerge stronger. And then we get to the last chapter in today's episode, Chapter 10, and it is titled, The Silver Trumpets. Chapter 10 introduces the use of silver trumpets for signaling various gatherings, movements, and battles. The sound of the trumpets serve as a call to action, signaling divine guidance and mobilizing the Israelites in unity. Whether summoning the congregation, signaling the start of a journey, or sounding the alarm in times of danger, the trumpets symbolize communication, coordination, and obedience to God's commands. Now, when we look at this from a personal and collective growth perspective, just as the trumpets signal direction and action for the Israelites, individuals are encouraged to heed divine guidance and act decisively on their spiritual journey. Developing sensitivity to God's voice and promptly responding to His leading fosters growth and fulfillment in life. Effective communication and coordination are essential for collective progress. Chapter 10 underscores the importance of clarity and unity in pursuing common objectives. By aligning efforts and staying connected, communities can navigate challenges and achieve shared aspirations more effectively. In summary, the book of Numbers, chapter 7 through 10, offers a treasure trove of insights for personal and collective growth. Through the narratives of offerings, consecration, celebration, and communication, we glean timeless principles that inspire us to cultivate generosity, unity, gratitude, and obedience on our journey towards spiritual and communal flourishing. As we apply these lessons in our communities and in our own lives, we move closer to realizing our own full potential and purpose. May these chapters from the Book of Numbers inspire you to listen more closely for God's voice and His guidance as you walk daily on the path laid before you. Until next time, may God abundantly bless you. Thank you for listening to this episode on the Joyful Alchemist podcast. I welcome your participation with your comments and questions, and also a reminder 
that audio episodes are accompanied by posts for your reading pleasure. May God bless your days abundantly. Until next time, this is Lynn Falconer, signing off.